the best for the people. And so that's what he wanted, that understanding in everything. So do we do we, what are we asking God for? Or are we in prayer just, you know, just praising the Lord? Nothing wrong with just in prayer, just thanking and praising the Lord. Don't have to come to God in prayer all the time asking for anything. You know, or, or, you know, God, um, you want more wisdom. You want, you know, God gives us these things, but maybe you want an increase. A God will see from time to time. He'll give you that increase. God is there for you at all times. And see, that's very, very important. Um, accepting your salvation, accepting your salvation. Because Jesus died for everyone. And it is God's will that everyone gets saved. Salvation is for everyone. Eternal life is for everyone. The salvation package that we have right now on earth because of the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus died and rose for our sins. We have eternal life now. We have a relationship with God that we can pray to God through Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. See, we didn't have that before, but through the blood of Jesus, we have that now. Through the the resurrection of Jesus, we have eternal life, we have peace, we have um, deliverance from temporal evil, health, healing. And we don't have to be down here and always say busted up, tore up, shot down, tore down. And accepting pain and taking pain pills and all of that. Sins are forgiven. Everything. That doesn't mean that we continue to sin, sin, sin and do the same thing over and over again. But we we can come boldly to the throne, boldly before the Lord now. God doesn't see all of that in us. And, And prosperity doesn't mean you got... Coins and gold falling from the sky and all that. But prosperity in every area of your life where you're not wanting, you're not um, starving and, and can't eat or this or that and things like that. I know there are places in the countries where people are starving. And if you read the Bible, you see that there, the time of the end, there are going to be famines, there are going to be warfare, there are going to be things like that. We are in the time of the end, and Jesus can come any day. And I say, get ready, be ready, stay ready. So these are things that we have right now because of the resurrection of Jesus right now. Eternal eternal life we have peace, peace within that, you know, we don't, we're not just so upset and so everything we have that eternal peace internal peace and and deliverance from temporal evil you don't have to worry about the the thoughts and things like that now not that you're not going to get attacks on these things happening on your health on 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 healing on on things of that in your life but you have the right to rebuke them in the name of Jesus any sickness, anything, it's not supposed to be. It is an encroachment of your life. It is illegal. And you don't have to stand for it. Call it out. Shout it out. Get it out in the name of Jesus. Call it out. Oh, my head is hurting right now. This headache. Put your hand on where the headache is. Command that headache to go in the name of Jesus. Just speak the word. My head is hurting. And that pain, if you believe and you know it's not supposed to be there, that pain will leave. Hallelujah. Amen. Because through the blood of Jesus, the 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 the, the death, birth, burial, and resurrection, he rose again. None of this right now. We don't have to be down here suffering. Right now, you are shielded. You are shielded by the Holy Spirit. You don't have to be down here worried right now. 
You don't have to wait to die to receive the salvation package, eternal life, and the land of milk and honey. Of course that is coming. Of course. But right now, salvation, you don't have to be down here suffering and struggling. God has you. God loves you. And it's, it's, it's right now, he wants everybody to be saved. He wants everybody name on the book, on the books. Hallelujah. And right now, and you can go over to that site, it's Salvation Prayer over there, praiseandprayer.org. Or right now, you can repeat after me and accept your salvation. And, and read Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10. Believe in your heart. And that Jesus died, Jesus that Jesus rose again and said out loud, you will be saved. Read Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. Uh, read it for yourself and see what it says. There's no cookie cutter thing to say. But you just acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. It's say it, acknowledge the meaning with your heart and everything. And you will be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 through 10. But right now you can repeat after me as well. If you want to dedicate yourself or rededicate yourself. You can repeat after me right now. And you can say Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the son of God. And that you died on the cross for my sins. Lord Jesus I ask. That you come into my life as my Lord and as my Savior. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Congratulations for those of you who repeated this salvation prayer right now. Or for those of you who rededicated yourself, congratulations. There is much, much joy in the heavens. Heavens when people come to the Lord. Hallelujah. And get start praying every day, every day. If you're not already, get that personal relationship with God. He will lead you in all the right directions. He will lead you. To as of the next steps that you have to take where you need to go find a place of worship. If you don't already, um, to fellowship with like-minded people that will help and lead you along the way. And definitely read your Bible and pray to God. Pray to God. Don't look for man for your salvation. Don't look. No, no. God says my people perish for the lack of knowledge. So know what's right and wrong. Listen to the words of God. Listen to God lead you. God speaks in many, many ways. And just listen and be open and ready and receiving where he is leading you in your life. Let go and let God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. Acknowledge him first. And he shall direct your paths. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 through 6. I I try my best to live by that every single day. And no matter what situation goes on in my life. That God is alive and he's right here with me. Guiding me and leading me every, every step of the way. So we ought to be thanking God. We ought to be praising him every single day. Um, thanking Jesus, celebrating Jesus every single day, not only on Christmas when, you know, um, the holiday time and things like that. Just thank and praise God every, every single day. Nothing wrong with, you know, you're spending time with your family and things like that. And uh, people may bring gifts and so forth. I mean, you know, you do and celebrate Christ. That's the main thing. Don't get so caught up in in doing this or um, is this person supposed to put a tree up or the gifts or, you know, don't get so caught up in all the physical things about it. Just remember 
Jesus. Just remember, just go into your Bibles and read and be thankful. And thank Jesus. Thank him. Because without him, without the, the mediator, Jesus Christ, Lord of Lord, King of Kings, that none of this would be possible right now. We would not be in the standing situation that we are in right now. So pray to God. Stay prayed up. Stay prayed up. Stay close to God. And we cannot. We are not meant to do it alone. We cannot put one foot in front of the other. So instead of doing what we do sometimes. Pick up that phone and we gossip and Girl, guess what happened or whatever. Instead of doing that, go to God in a positive way and let him lead you. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. So, um, just right here when Solomon was really wanting for the people. Wasn't thinking about himself, but for the people. You know, we need to be thinking about our brothers and our sisters. What can we do? We're here to serve. What can we do? What can we give our brothers and our sisters? What can we do, you know, to to help them out and and, and serve them and, and reach the people? Reach the people and help them see, just plant those seeds. What can we do for people? What is our ministry about? What are, 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 how are we helping the people to understand and come into Christ and be saved? What are we doing? You know, and a lot of people, you know, um, I speak about church organizations and you go into church and things like that and you serve within the walls. But what do you do outside of the walls? Are you going out in the communities? Um, are you reaching the people? Are you blessing the people outside of the walls, outside of, of the, the things that um, the organization, the church organizations give and things like that, and you're helping and you're volunteering and everything? What are you doing outside of that with your own ministries? You know, so we have to look at all of these things. We have to look at all of these things. And we have to have that balance. We have to pray to the Lord to guide us and direct us. And God God says that, that his yoke is easy. His burden is light. So if you're doing things inside the walls of the church and it's a lot and you're tired, you're exhausted, and, and you're here two, three, four days a week for a couple hours at a time, and you're tired, sometimes you need to just evaluate and get what God and maybe there needs to be a shift. Is this where you belong? Is this because you're always tired? But when you get there, you know, you're probably glad that you're there. You're happy that you're there and everything. But then you dread just going back again and going back again. Sometimes you need to get with God and evaluate yourself. Um, are, are you using the gifts that God has given you? Do you know the gifts that you have? That God wants you to exert. Are you exerting them within the four walls? Well that's good and fine. If that's what you enjoy. But are you exerting them outside of the four walls? Are you exerting them um, on your own ministry? On your own time? You know do you have a little team on the outside? Or take a couple members from the church or whatever. Um. Is your your minister, your pastor, is he a leading example? Um, is he going out in the community with you, the members, and showing you, showing you this is how you do it? Going into the stores, going into the barber shops, going into you know passing out little pamphlets or something, or um. Do you need prayer today or we just came to just, you know, give you a gift here or, you know, let you know, you know, just to say hi. You know, we're in the neighborhood. You know, hello, um, we invite you to come to church Sunday or this or that or whatever. Pass out a couple little gifts or something. Would you like prayer or is there anything that we can do uh, for you right here, right now? 
You know, as your your pastor taking a few people out um, every week or so, just going and hitting the communities. On uh, Mother's Day, you can go to the grocery store or something, buy some flowers and hand